This is the YD2Z Ready to Run Drift Car from Yokomo, who's probably the main name in the RC Drift Car game. Recently we looked at the RMX 2.5 Drift Car, and that one's cheaper, and there's a whole lot more body styles to choose from. So why would anybody choose this Ready to Run over that Ready to Run? Well, let's find out. Ooh. Paperwork. Got a battery, battery charger, transmitter, manual, and there's a couple tools in there. It's also a transmitter manual, a practice guide, but it's not in English, parts diagram, gyro manual, speed controller manual, and there's this tuning tips guide. It's pretty nice, and it is in English. Now, one thing that's really nice about this car is it is based on the YD2 chassis, and so there's tons of different option parts out there for that platform that'll fit on this car. This ready to run version shares 90% of the same parts with the other more competition based platforms. But this one is a ready to run. It's for beginners to get into drifting so much so that it even includes the battery and then this USB style charger. This is a 1600 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride battery. The only thing required are four AA batteries for the transmitter. Now here it is the YD2Z ready to run with this white colored Toyota Supra body. This ready to run car is offered with only one body style, the Supra, but it is available in white or red color. The body looks pretty good. It's pretty basic and minimal with the decals over the windows for tint. You cannot see through. Then there's decals up front for the headlights and there's more decals in the back. And overall, it's very simplistic and ready to be customized with more decals. These body posts stick out kind of high, but we can always trim those down. Now underneath the chassis, it looks very similar to some of the other drift cars that we've looked at. There are plastic shocks on here. They're coil over springs. There's no oil inside. These are pretty basic shocks. I believe you can adjust the preload though with different spacers on the shock bodies if you wanted to. There's a big foam bumper up front. Something really cool on here are the adjustable turnbuckles used throughout. So in that sense, it's all adjustable. We've got our servo down low on the chassis and it's played, placed somewhat forward. And then right behind that servo is the speed controller and then the receiver and also the gyro. The connector is a Tamiya style connector coming off of that ESC, which is a pretty old school way of going about it, but that's to match with that nickel metal hydride battery. Thankfully, connector changing is pretty easy. Now the steering's like a double bell crank design. It is all ball bearings. And there is a lot of steering through coming out of that front end. The motor position is pretty high up in the chassis, but it's not all the way up. It is adjustable and I believe 13 different steps you can rotate depending on your track conditions. It is a 27 turn brushed motor to match our brushed ESC. The rear turnbuckles are also adjustable turnbuckles and all of the turnbuckles are actually notched so you know their thread direction. Those drive shafts too are captured CVDs or maybe universal drive shafts on there. And then inside this gearbox, there's an actual gear differential. It's not a lock spool. And I believe that's the hot ticket to be running right now in drift cars. Let's grab the RMX 2.5 that we just reviewed and put it side by side. One note about the RMX is we added the magnetic body mounts, but other than that, it is a box stock car. Now, just looking at them sitting by side by side, the RMX looks a bit more slim in the chassis area. It's designed out of the box to be used with the shorty, where on the YD, it's a little bit tubbier back there to accommodate that bigger stick pack but the RMX does not have adjustable turnbuckles anywhere, where on the YD, they're used everywhere. And then on the YD, it all co also comes with the motor sitting up high, kind of in the mid-range position, where on the 2.5, it comes out of the box in a low position. The RMX does come with the ESC relocated all the way to the back, which is really nice. And on the Yokomo, it actually comes right behind the servo. So I imagine if we were to put these on the scale weight system, the weight bias on the RMX would be more weight back. Yeah, so the RMX 2.5 is actually 62% bias towards that rear end where the YD is 58. One thing that's interesting is the overall weight on the YD was about 980 grams, where on the RMX, it's about 1078, almost 100 grams heavier. 
Who else noticed the left and right side bias? Another difference between the two platforms is gonna be that rear gearbox where the MST has a lock spool. There's no active differential back there. You can buy one optionally, but the Yokomo comes with a gear diff out of the box. The price is the last big difference between these cars with the Yokomo being $30 more, $330 or the MST brushed model at $300. Although if you wanna add those tuning aids, like the adjustable turnbuckles for the MST, that's 17 bucks. The gear differential upgrade is $37. So adding those would make the MST more expensive than the Yokomo. The Yokomo also includes the battery to get you going, which could save you about $50. It's not the most ideal, but it'll work. And it's also the battery that we're gonna go use. So that's what the stock tires, and it actually feels pretty dang good on this carpet. There's not a whole lot of motor speed. And the front tires seem to be hunting and moving around a lot. That gyro sensitivity is probably turned up pretty high. Let's try it on a different surface. Slides around pretty good in here too, although if you get it spinning too much, that rear end will loop around on you. You can hear the car ticking. It's like you can almost see the mold, the mold spots on the tires, these like little hard spots. And every time they go around, they make that little ticking sound. There's one right there. It's kind of hard to see now that we've scuffed up the tires. Give it another go. some of the good Yokomo tires. Let's try those on and take off these included tires. These tires are a big improvement. The car will still slide out if you slide it around too much. We haven't made any other adjustments uh, with more practice and a real gentle trigger finger, it works a lot better. Remember, we're still using the stock battery for all this. We did change the tires, but we did change the tires when we tested the RMX too. The RMX is a great car and it's really strong in the areas of scale appeal and all the different body options. Plus you've got a brushed or brushless version. So you have more variations to choose from with the RMX, but the weak points are actually getting one. They're hard to get and they have limited out of the box adjustments without spending money on upgrades. The YD on the other hand has fewer variations with only one body style and it only comes brushed, but you can actually get it. They're in stock and they offer more out of the box adjustments. Yokomo arguably has a bigger community of enthusiast drifters. And for testing and tuning and becoming a serious drifter, I have to say that the YD is where it's at. And that's why you choose one over the RMX. The YD may cost a little more up front, but if you're serious about this and you need to start with an RTR, the YD will probably save you a lot in the long run. Guys, thanks for watching and go check out the Yokomo YD2Z ready to run with our links down below. I'm Brad from A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.